Thank you for tuning in to the Belleville Croconole Challenge, a Tier 1 NCA event hosted by the Quinty Region Croconole Club. We have a bout of Croconole Titans in this semi-final match. Jason Beerling, currently ranked 13th in the NCA, versus Justin Slater, currently tied for first alongside Connor Ryman. Both these competitors have a plethora of World Croconole titles under their belt. Jason Beerling has won the World Croconole Doubles Division eight times alongside his brother, Ray. Meanwhile, Justin has won the World Crokinole Singles five times. Needless to say, both these competitors are highly skilled, and this will be a fantastic race to nine. Let's get right to it. Beerling will shoot first in this match, giving Slater the first hammer of the game. Jason opening strong, Slater most likely to follow suit, and oh, never mind, coming up short, very atypical for Slater. Beerling taking full advantage of that mistake going up two now in the 20s cup. Slater going long, a little bit of an overcorrection. A potential double here maybe for Beerling. I don't know if he wants it. Oh, a follow through. Man, why do I think Jason Beerling shooting? He's gonna go for something awesome. Slater able to get a 20 of his own but still down two 20s in the cup. Now shooting through his own, pushing play back into the center, not wanting to get too far to the fringes. And Beerling playing very aggressively, going for that follow through there. Justin pushing back in again. See if Beerling, what he wants to go for on this shot. Taking his time to see the angles. If his last shots are any indication, I figure that He's playing very aggressively, wanting to get up in the 20s. Nonetheless, Slater now with a difficult shot, following through, not quite to the 20, but very nice attempt on his part. And Beerling with yet another 20. Didn't need it, but absolutely wanted it. Slater back with his open 20s now, but inconsequential at this point. Beerling taking a look at a cup, knowing he's won the round. Taking a second to practice his open 20s. Technically an invalid shot, but inconsequential. Probably a wise move because knowing the history of Justin Slater and his infamous 20s game, probably good to get a practice shot in there when you have the chance. See so many highlight reels from Jason Beerling. Basically half his round is a highlight reel. That's classic Beerling fashion. Slater now honed in on those open 20s. Beerling having the hammer of this second round. Up two points. We can see Fred Slater in the back there to support Justin. Those two are doubles partners for the World Crokinole Championships and most other doubles tournaments. They actually most recently won the 2024 World Crokinole Doubles Division. Both players back and forth in 20s. No mistakes so far. Halfway through their shots, four and four in the 20s cup. Very rapid paced and Beerling, the first to miss now. Justin leaving his disc very nicely posted. That is the defensive strategy that Slater is also very well known for. And I think that's lesser known because anyone who kind of hears about Crokinole hears about one of the top guys and is like, oh, his 20s game is insane and that's all you want to know. But... Slater's defensive strategy, as soon as he's up, he doesn't typically keep fighting for 20s. He gets 120 on you and then just brings it out to the outside, and he's dang good at it. Slater taking a second to uh, look at the situation, seeing he's up in the cup, down to his last shot. He wants to make sure that he doesn't leave anything for Beerling. Beerling might be lining up for a double follow through 20 here, but that second disc is very nicely posted and that looked like it was actually online. He got the double but lost his shooter, but I think his shooter was on the right line to go to the center. And I am now uh, hitting myself over the head because I didn't put that in the replays. It was a very good attempt, but now players tied in points two and two. Slater taking that second round into the third now. Slater will have hammer in this third round, so that slight advantage to him will be dependent on who messes up first, which is Slater. Bouncing out back, might be a drop back 20 opportunity. 
and Beerling unable to convert, looking a little confused at uh, what happened there. Caught a lot of pegs, and Justin looked like he was fighting for a follow-through there. Went a little bit long. Beerling content to stay on the outside here. Slater able to catch a post. Doesn't bring it in too far, but enough to not get caught out on the fringes. Beerling pushing through, and now I'm almost certain there's a drop back chance there for Slater. Oh, no, just a little bit over. This is a interesting situation. Slater not in a bad spot right now. He has 30 points on the board, which puts him 10 above Beerling. So Beerling's probably hunting for a 20. That's, yeah, I was going to say or a double. But no, Beerling is hunting for a 20 because he gets those. Slater with a 20 of his own. Still down one in the cup, but uh, on the board. In total right now, as the situation is, he's tied in points with Jason. Little bit of a precarious situation. Beerling wants to make sure that Justin's not able to get any more points. Went for a 20. Very bold strategy. Wasn't quite able to get it. Could be costly if Slater is able to convert here. And oh! Back to back small mistakes from both these players. Slater unable to get the off there. Doesn't get the 20 either. And looking at it, I think that just about does it. Even if Slater gets a... His best shot is to get a follow through 20 here. And even that would only tie the round. And catches a post on his way in. So Beerling will take the third round. We see some highlights here. Very nice 20 from Jason. Also a nice roll away blocking that lane there. Into the fourth round now. Beerling will have hammer of this fourth bout. And again, back to this 20s race. Both players very proficient at this. We see Ray Beerling in the background. Oh, Jason lips out, leaving a backboard here for Slater. Now up two in the cup. Beerling fighting to get back in here. Beerling does have the hammer, but right now as the situation lays, he's now he's down two 20s. I was going to say one, but now it's two. And Slater looked like he was pushing to get in front of that post. Doesn't quite get it, but still not a gimme off. Beerling had to be a little bit careful around that post. He was able to deal with it. Slater most likely just staying out here. See, I don't think Jason can bring it back in. So he peels. Slater now for an open 20, which he converts. I think the shot's at this point inconsequential. Slater will be taking this fourth round. So far, these players have been neck and neck going back and forth. Two points for Slater. Two points for Beerling. This game keeps going like this. It will most definitely be intense. See a nice conversion there from Slater. We're going into the fifth round now. Slater will have hammer, but Beerling undeterred. Both players have been strong. Pretty consistent with the 20s. Not any ridiculously long races. Still getting some good play on the board. And Justin, a little bit short, leaving a hanger here for Beerling. Not quite able to convert, and I'm curious if Justin will be able to get a 20 in up the left side. Oh, not quite. Leaving a big opportunity here now for Beerling, who is able to convert now up two 20s in the cup. Slater back to the 20s. Now, he does have hammer, but he's down a shot in the cup right now, which means he'll be looking for a mistake out of Beerling. As the 20s have been, I don't think it's super likely, but we'll see. And, oh, Beerling going long, but not the worst spot to be in. I mean, he's blocking that lane way up pretty well. Taking a second to adjust the cup so players can see the 20s. Beerling is up 120 right now. And it looks like Slater's trying to hide on Beerling to draw a mistake out of him. Not super well hidden on that first one. We'll see if Slater goes for that again. Going on defense, and now that is a nice hide. We'll see very thin slice. Beerling's able to get it. Slater's final shot now. He needs to angle in and get a 20 to tie this. 
on Abel. Catches a post, and Beerling will take this round. Very nice play. We see him take advantage of that, and we see Beerling undeterred by Slater's defensive maneuvers as he carves just around that post. Beerling to have hammer in this round. Now up two points on the scoreboard. Again, players are racing to nine. Whoever hits that goal post first will be moving on to the final round to face the newcomer, Devin Fortino. If you haven't seen that match, I cannot express enough how much you need to go see that. Truly an awesome showdown between Andrew Hutchinson and Devin Fortino. Beerling looked like he was going for a touch 20 there, but not quite able to get the off. Keeps his in the 15 at the very least. Slater with two discs on the board, but against the hammer. Beerling has a bit of work if he wants to take this from a tie to a win. But may have set Slater up for a uh, bump and... Oh! Was hoping to catch that black disc, but uh, the hole interfered. Slater lost both his shots, and now Beerling is up in the 20s cup. We'll see what Beerling does now. Probably wants to get play closer back to his side. Rolls out closer to Justin. Justin more than likely going on defense mode. We see him hide nicely between the posts there, hoping to get a mistake out of Beerling. Beerling considering his options. Seems like he's not convinced he can get around the posts or not sure. Unable. Right into the middle of that post. A 20 opportunity here for Slater now. And he gets it. Beerling able to hit and stick through Hogan's alley. Very nice. Pressure on Slater to either get an incredible hide in. Oh! Oh, that is gorgeous. We'll see if Beerling can get it. Pressure is on. If he can get this, he'll be up to eight points on the scoreboard. And he does, keeping his on the board. Jason Beerling now up eight to four. He is a tie round away from winning this semifinal match against Justin Slater to go on to the finals to face off against Devin Fortino. Beerling keeping the pressure on, knowing what this is worth, opening with a 20. Slater now has hammer, opening with a 20 of his own. Again, Jason Beerling made the semifinal round as well at the Turtle Island Crokinole Championship, where he had a good match with Josh Carfiello. Unfortunately, did not come out victorious. And he either placed third or fourth in that tournament. I'm not 100% sure. I'll have to check my stats. But here he is again in the semifinal round. Just inches away from taking the victory. And Slater now up in the 20s cup. Beerling undeterred though. Will be hoping for a mistake. And he gets it. He gets the conversion. Again, if Beerling ties this round, he wins the game. It all comes down to this. Can he do it? Oh! No! You see Ray in the background. That is pretty much my reaction. That is unfortunate. See Justin's conversion there. We see another one from Beerling. It was just that last shot of his. I want a replay of Ray. I felt that. Beerling is still in an advantageous position. Again, Slater's still down at six points, so Beerling can even tie the round. He will move on to the finals match. So, so close to victory in that last round. We'll see if he's able to replicate that again in this round. Keeping up in the 20s cup, both players unrelenting. We see Jeff Saba, who came up from the uh, Extra Pint Crokinole Club. Down in the States, I believe he was the sole member of the club to come up. Always a great and friendly face to see at the tournament. Slater now at 520s. Beerling going long. Slater just happy to get play away, keep play back on his side of the 15 region. Beerling trying to catch post. Looks like he pulled it back ever so slightly, and Slater considering his options. Might have been a little bit tempted by 20 there, but... Caught a pose, pulled it back, and he fist bumped. So I'm curious if he meant to do that. Justin Slater, if you're watching this, please comment. I want to know, was that intentional? Because if so, that's freaking awesome. And I feel like people should know that, uh, that yeah, when you make a shot like that, it's not a mistake. You, you mean to do that. 
I know there's sometimes players, uh, new players especially, will see a shot, a crazy shot, and be like, ah, that's luck. And at this top level, most things cannot be called luck. Beerling needs a 20 off this. Oh! Caught the right post, but the wrong angle. And this round goes to Slater, bringing the score tied now, 8-8. Eight to eight. This is officially anybody's game now. Beerling to open, going strong, and bouncing back. Slater now with hammer. Oh, pulls it back a bit too far. A 20 opportunity here for Jason, which he converts on. Not out of the doghouse yet. Slater with that open 20, forces Beerling to peel on the outside here. Not to get stuck on the fringes. Slater unrelenting with the 20s game. Now up 20 with Hammer. All Beerling can do is keep up in the 20s and hope for a mistake out of Slater. But uh, hoping for a mistake out of Slater. Not a uh, optimal strategy. We'll see if the nerves get to him. We're down to these last few shots. Slater is two shots away from winning the semifinal round and moving to the finals match of the Belleville Crokinole Challenge. And if he does so, he has a chance to win the Belleville Tournament for his second consecutive year. Beerling in something of a pickle now. Even if he gets the off in a 20, all Slater needs is a valid shot to win the round. That does it. Final shot of formality. Slater will be moving on to the finals match of the Belleville Crokinole Challenge. Great performance from both players. Jason and Slater. Slater will be the one though to move on and face Devin Fortino in the finals match. Thank you again for tuning in. If you haven't seen the other semifinal, make sure to go tune in and be fully in the loop of what to expect as the finals will be coming out very shortly. Thank you again for tuning in to this National Crokinole Association coverage. If you liked it, please like, share, comment your favorite part, and subscribe to stay in the loop of the expanding Crokinole universe. My name is Garrett Tracy, and as always, make a great day.